Right now, first live at 5 o'clock here on WHAS 11 News. We have super hot temperatures out there. We are in the grip of this heat wave, folks. Uh, we told you earlier this week that today and tomorrow would really be tough, and it is playing out that way with blistering heat index numbers on the way. I hope certainly you're staying safe and cool as we endure this dangerous weather. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. Meteorologist Christina San Juan has been here since this morning, keeping an eye on the temperatures hour by hour. Christina, have you seen a peak yet? Well, I'd say we're at our peak right now, Doug and Shay, as we're sitting in the mid 90s, 95 degrees is the hottest that has been all day long, but it feels even hotter than that as you're stepping out the door because we do have a heat index. And of course, we are not alone. We have those heat alerts stretching from Cincinnati all the way east toward New York, as well as New Jersey, everyone under that heat advisory. We also have the air quality alert for portions of Kentucky and the entire state of Indiana. Now, as we take a look at those current temperatures across the area, everybody feeling those 90s. We're at 92 around Fort Knox, 95 here in Louisville still, and then holding on to 93 in Springfield. And this is what makes it feel so tropical outside that dew point that we're seeing in the upper 60s right now. Pretty soupy for us, I'd say. Now, that's what it's actually feeling like with 99 is our feels like temperature right now in Louisville. The hottest it's been all day long. It feels like 95 around Jasper and really the entire state of Kentucky. Now, as we go into the next couple of hours, not a whole lot of relief for us, only falling down into the mid 70s to kick off your Saturday and just wait until you see how hot the afternoon's going to be getting. I'll show you here in just a bit. Doug and Shay. Christina, thank you. Breaking news right now at five. We're following details about a mass shooting. Continuing the breaking news from the state of Arkansas, where police say nine people were shot at what's called the Mad Butcher Grocery Store. That's in Fordyce, Arkansas. Two people were killed in this event. A police officer has been shot. We are told tonight that he is expected to survive. The suspect was shot by police and critically injured and is now in police custody. We will keep an eye on this developing story out of Arkansas this evening, bringing you new information right here on the show just as soon as we get it. Right here locally at 5, it's been a busy week for Louisville Metro Police battling controversy and sexual harassment lawsuits, as you know. But today, they're working to highlight what they call the win for the city. Police have made several arrests in a, have made arrests in a serial burglary case, recovering thousands of dollars worth of stolen property. Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Jessica Farley show us what was taken. Some of these items could be yours. What on the surface look like items from a yard sale are actually evidence of a massive haul recovered by 3rd Division LMPD officers. Sergeant Joey Keeling says so far, three suspects are in custody, charged in connection with a string of thefts. Police valuing the stolen property at $50,000 total. It took us uh, a couple weeks to kind of see the pattern that we had. It was obviously a serial burglar. These weren't just random burglaries. Detectives executed search warrants at properties in two different neighborhoods in Southwest Jefferson County between PRP and Shively, finding everything from lawn mowers to power tools and drugs. But the houses hit were widespread across the map. So as soon as we opened the cabinet, we knew that one was mine because of the marks on the bottom. Tracy Titus lives along Bardstown Road in the Highlands. She moved into her home back in January, and by May, she ended up being one of the countless victims hit by burglars. Her six foot cabinets full of art supplies gone. I went to bed about midnight one night when I got up at 7 a.m. My garage was wide open and um, my stuff was gone. And it's clear the criminals weren't picky on what they were taking from homeowners. Well, most of what was recovered was anything from bikes to yard equipment, but it is worth noting police have talked about guns getting into the wrong hands and one of the items stolen here, exactly that. Albeit a BB gun, authorities have warned stolen weapons are often used in other crimes, a big concern of theirs. We do work hard on the violent crime in this city for sure, um, but uh, we don't want the community to forget we all are also working on the property crime as well. And for these results, Titus tells me she's appreciative. I was thrilled. Um, I felt like he, he got on it and he got, he got it done. I'm, I'm very thankful. Police are encouraging folks to get in the habit of noting serial numbers on valuable items and marking their belongings to make them easy to identify. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11, on your side. Much of what you just saw in our report is still unclaimed. If you believe any of those items belong to you, 
or if your home or garage was burglarized in the last couple of months, you need to contact police. LMPD says even if you haven't filed a report yet, they're going to work with you to get your belongings back. A good idea to take a closer look at that video. You can see it again on our website, whas11.com. Right now, more local news. The Louisville Metro Council has approved next year's fiscal year budget, allocating nearly half of the over $1 billion to public safety. That money will go to Louisville Fire and EMS, also LMPD, to cover personal raises equipment upgrades and facility renovations. The budget also includes more than $30 million to create affordable housing. The mayor wants the city to build 15,000 units by 2027. $50 million will go toward quality of life improvements. That's things like street paving and sidewalk repairs. $7 million will go to the Louisville Park System. The mayor also proposed $5 million to go to a nonprofit to create a pathway for universal pre-K in the city. Last night, some council members expressed concerns over that nonprofit, saying there are already current organizations doing that work. All of those organizations could be funded with that $5 million that we proposed for Thrive by Fly. We do not have to accept this budget. We can propose our own budget that addresses the people's need, but there's no political will to do so. So I cannot wholeheartedly vote for something that does not meet the needs. You just heard there from Councilwoman Shamika Parrish Wright, and ultimately she did join the other council members and approve the budget. She said she voted yes to honor the decisions of the district. The 2024 fiscal year ends on June the 30th. The local nonprofit Vocal Kentucky is not happy with the Metro Council's decision to approve the budget last night. Some members took to the mayor's office this morning to protest. In particular, the organization was unhappy with the hundreds of millions of dollars going to LMPD. They felt that it could have been better used for housing services or other, other nonprofits. Some we talked to told us they felt like there wasn't much transparency from Metro government during the entire process. There, there is no conversation and they don't, you knock on the door and you don't get an answer. You make a phone call, you don't get an answer. They cut you off when you speak at the, at, at the council, they cut you off. No, they're not listening, they don't. And the new budget will take effect on the 1st of July. In southern Indiana, now the Indiana Court of Appeals has ruled against former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll, denying his motion to overturn his original bond. Ruling coming today, the former Clark County Indiana Sheriff, as you know, is facing multiple felony charges. He's accused of corrupt business influence, official misconduct, ghost employment, theft and obstruction of justice. Jamie Knoll was first arrested in November. Judge Larry Medlock set his bond first at $75,000, ordered him to turn in his passport and most of his guns. The appeals court ruled that it found no abuse of discretion in the court's decision to require Knoll to post bond and with those conditions and did not find the $75,000 bond to be excessive. The judge then changed the bond and upped it now to $1.5 million. Construction is still ongoing at Louisville's Norton West Louisville Hospital, and they aren't expecting their first patient until November, but things are moving along. Today, we got the first look of the inside look at the progress. This is the first time in 150 years that a hospital will be built west of 9th Street. This new location will offer general surgery, pediatric primary care, orthopedics, and more. Jose Alonso and photojournalist Emma Gefter take us inside. It's all about one step at a time for Norton Healthcare, especially as they continue to build their West Louisville Hospital. And it's in collaboration with multiple organizations in the area and businesses alike. And we got a good look of the progress right inside. Pieces being sawed apart to put together a life-saving project. Well, we started doing surveys and asking people what we wanted this facility to look like well over two years ago. Last year we went out and we updated folks on what that looked like. That's a large partnership there. This entire campus is being assembled by the healthcare system and West Louisville businesses. We've had a lot of opportunity with a lot of other uh, local um, vendors, suppliers, and subcontractors um, that get to be a part of something in history on the side of town, so it's really awesome. So Springfield Plumbing uh, is one, Joe Ash Construction uh, is another. Um, I could go on. I, we've, we've had so many that have been a partner in this project that, that has been critical. The exterior is currently surrounded by heavy machinery and unfinished panels, but it's set to transform from this to this. These renderings give us a look at what the completed building should look like. The ways that we can build trust and relationships that, that healthcare systems haven't been able to in the past 
really is what this facility is all about. So we're very, very committed to doing this the right way. Flooring continues to be placed throughout the hospital and right outside this door on the second floor, we took a look at a dedicated space that will house multiple plants. This is one of the three green roofs uh, within the building. So you'll have one here kind of in the admin area and then you'll have the two over at the uh, patient care area. The project is still on time to open in November. I asked the CEO of Norton Healthcare if this could potentially be the model for other hospitals outside of the metro. For us here in Louisville, for us in the state of Kentucky in the region that includes Southern Indiana and so many others, it would make sense that we look at this facility and say, does this work in other parts of our community? The view doesn't look as empty as the rooms around the building. But the great thing is you can see the uh, city line right there, too. Oh. This project will shine a bright light on the community. In Louisville, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11, on your side. Right now, there are still 300 open positions available, and there is still time to apply if you're interested in them. And you can find a link on how to apply for those jobs. We've got all the details for you posted on our website, whas11.com. Well, while Louisville continues to see growth and big developments, the Goodwill Opportunity Campus opened up earlier this year. The aim of that project is to provide visitors with business amenities. Right now, crews are working to expand Waterfront Park into West Louisville. The 22-acre park will be between 10th and 4th Streets, adding green space right there to the riverfront. We've also seen businesses move into that part of town, like Stellar Snacks, bringing a new $137 million pretzel bakery at the former Black Leaf Chemical Site. Happening right now, celebrating the summer solstice. Summer is here big time. Today is the first official full day of summer, and what better way to celebrate than by enjoying one of our area's largest Catholic parish picnics. The St. Martha's picnic kicks off tonight. You can expect more cakes, more fun, more chicken than ever before. WHAS 11's Colleen Peterson is there. And Colleen, you've been there for a little bit now, so what is selling the most? I can probably guess what you're going to tell us. Uh, listen, I showed you the kids section, now it's time to play where the adults are playing. I'm here playing blackjack and I want you to play a hand with me. I'm going to go ahead and put down $40. John, we don't like John, we want to beat John. I'm here with Hannah, you met her before, and we're going to see if we can beat the dealer here. Yeah, so all the proceeds go to the church, so it's a good fundraiser. All right, let's, let's do this. Give us our hand. Ten, pretty good. Can I get a face card? Oh, 14. No. Oh, no, that's horrible. I was told you're supposed to stay if it's no, take, above I a 12. Take, I take the hit. You're going to take the hit? I'm going to stay because you have a dealer has a three. So you go ahead and she would say to take a hit. Oh, bus. All right, wait, but dealer could still bust. Let's see if the dealer busts. 714. Yeah, hey, too many. Too many. Too many. We won. We're beating dealer all the proceeds go to the church here this is a lot of fun there's an adult section there's beer there's a fish fry dinner that goes and by the way this is open until midnight so past kids bedtime the parents can come out and play all the proceeds go to the church there's a lot of things going on and we have so much more to talk about here over the next hour back to you guys all right Colin.